We got a way to go. Where? Stupid talk. Now you come on. Well, please yourself. Oh, wait! Take me back. If you're a runaway, I won't tell about you. I swear it. Where's Emily? Oh, stop! Won't you? I can't walk no more. Please, take me back. Mr. Patrick, he'll reward you. Patrick Mannion? You've heard of him. <laughs> reward me, he'd kill me more like. No, he wouldn't. I tell him you saved me. Mr. Byrne tried to rape me and you stopped him. It's the truth. You Patrick's woman. I I'm housekeeper. Emily, that's my name. Emily. Emily. What's yours? Johnny Prentice. Prentice. Ellen Prentice. You heard of her? My mama, Ellen Prentice. She's free now. Oh, don't you know? Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? We'll try again, Mr. Byrne. I know you're conscious. Oh, I'm sick, sir. I can't remember. Emily was with you at the river. I, By her choice. And you made... Love to her. Was that by her choice? Aye. She favoured me. 
Think of a liar, Mr. Byrne. She was willing, sir. That's why she chose to stay with the Mr. Swinter Sidney. Many's the night we were together, here and in her hut. Many's the night, sir. The man who attacked you. A huge fella. With a beard. Could be occupied, if you know what I mean, sir. I had not a hope in hell. What color was his hair? Color, sir. Black. An escaped convict, for sure. Black. You're not only a liar, Mr. Byrne, but a very poor one. <coughs> I'm cold. Didn't you hear? It's freezing. I'm sorry about this woman. Truly, I am. She said she shot Mr. Mannion. Let her hang. She told the constable. She said it out loud for everyone to hear. It weren't Mr. Patrick's fault. Oh, kill him, won't I? Now who's talking stupid? You're mad. You think you can murder who you like and, and get away with it? They do. Who? The Mannions. They killed Matt Finn. Mr. Patrick had nothing to do with it. I don't want to hear that name no more. Well, I'll keep saying it till you take me back. So you can belong to him. Like, like Mama and, and his father. It's different. Nothing's different. That's what he wants, isn't it? For you to be his woman. Yes. Come on. You're taking me back. To him? No. Just this once. A manion's not going to get what he wants. I won't go. You can do what you like, but I won't. I've, I've got a house back there. It's warm. I don't care. I've got a farm. I've got food to eat. I won't go. Anyway, I don't believe you. Well, stay here. Sleep with the wild dogs and the kurangs. You can't scare me. What's kurang? Snake. You wouldn't really leave me. How could you have a house and a farm out here? It's lies! Johnny? All right? See if I care, you can go to hell. Prentice again. I'm afraid you have an obsession about that fellow. I'm certain he's responsible, sir. And you want soldiers to search the mountain for some chit of a servant girl? My dear chap. I take it the answer is no. The answer, Patrick, is the girl is doubtless no better off than she should be. And has probably run off with some sailor. Do you have a glass of cap? No, thank you. Offer a reward if you have an interest in her. Have it published in the Gazette along with the names of other absconders. God knows there are enough of them. Cheer up. You'll find yourself another housekeeper. Good day, Mr. McCarver. Out of here. That's a sheep. I know what it is, and it don't come in here. This place is filthy enough. Well, are we going to eat it? Not me. Not that furry animal. I'd sooner starve. 
Can't you stop that? Stop it. Go on, get off with you. The place is a pig sty. You've got awful table manners. Oh, table manners. Ain't you heard of plates, knives and forks? Well, I said you're hungry. Yeah. Never ate cheap. It's good. Go on. I heard Mr. MacArthur tell the mistress once that sheep was for making wool, not for eating. That's so. It was his sheep before I stole it. Honest. Nice. Told you. It's like beef, only different. Didn't you hear what I said? Good night. Good night. Will you be going long, Mum? I don't know. It depends, Laura. See Mr. Harvey gets that letter, won't you? Yes, Mum. I'm sorry you have not called to see me of late. And assume you have been greatly occupied with the school. Boys. I have to leave for Beltrasna. Patrick has sent the most disturbing news that concerns Emily. I told you to keep them chickens out of here. Johnny. 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 Johnny, not here. Yes, he is. You get going. Uh, Bill I'll... along. Friend. This Moolah, wife. <laughs> Johnny, go. Say stay here. Go? Go where? Just go. Thank you, Mrs. Gray. I hope you'll stay a few days. Of course. I'll entertain you as best I can, but I'm short-handed since I discharged Burns. Do you believe his story? Not a word. I should tell you, Emily did say that Mr. Byrne was paying court to her. She gave that as her reason for wanting to stay here, although I'm not sure it was the truth. Did you encourage her? Connor. Oh, let's not be delicate, Patrick. That won't help Emily. I was attracted to her. And she to you? I believe so. Was she your mistress? No. But it was what you intended. I could hardly marry her. No, I suppose not. Look, I went to MacArthur and the military, but they won't help. They have their own problems. There's much discord among the rebels. While well, Governor Bly remains a prisoner, Sydney's an unhappy place. Is it out of the question for you to mount your own search? I've tried once before to find him. It's a trackless wilderness out there. 
He knows it and has the help of the natives. It would only be a gesture, futile at best. If it is this Johnny Prentice, do you think he'll harm her? I don't know. It's been so long since I saw him. That's what torments me. I just don't know. Poor Patrick. There seems nothing we can do. Green Hills. I'll give you Green Hills leaving me alone. You weren't alone. As good as treating you as a native woman, you red-haired, dirty, good-for-nothing bar rat. Get off of it. Well, you get up or I'll fetch you another one. Go on. Now, I'll go when I want and I'll come back when I please. I've been trading. Stealing more like. Trade for you. See? Plates, eh? Plates. <laughs> Knives and forks. And this, this, for you. Me? Well, it's not for me, that's Dolka. Dolka? Dolka, it means sky, sky color. Blue. Yeah, blue, like eyes. Whose eyes? Yours. That cost me a gold coin. <laughs> Don't you want food? You're too stupid to speak. All right, then, don't... Don't eat, don't speak. You make a good noise when you keep your mouth shut. I'll take you back to Patrick Mannion, eh? Teach him a lesson. Good night, silly. My eyes really don't go. get this clean. That's what I'd like to know, without soap. What soap? You're a hopeless heathen. That's what you are, Johnny Prentice. Fancy not knowing that. Soap is... Soap. Johnny? Johnny! to see the convicts no longer chained. Is it true you're paying them wages? That's not supposed to be known. I shan't speak of it. It's little enough. No matter what the law says, it seems fair to pay if they work hard. You haven't mentioned Mr. Harvey. You haven't asked. He's well. Busy with his school and the new premises. Which I believe Mr. Campbell has leased to him. Yes. I'm glad. It wasn't right he should be victimized for supporting Bly. Do you see him? Rarely, of late. Perhaps it's best. Patrick, I'm going to marry him. You're not serious? 
Indeed I am. And it would give me great pleasure if you were to attend our wedding. Forgive me, but I do think it's unsuitable. And very unwise of him to have asked you. Oh, he hasn't. Not yet. He's far too proper and too proud. So, I dare say I shall have to ask him. Seems strange to be back here in Government House, Mr. Hardy. I had hoped so. It would be reinstatement. I am the Governor. He's not allowed to govern. My every step watched over by scoundrels in the King's colours. Sworn to protect me. Damn their scarlet coats. <coughs> Sit down, Mr. Hardy. Worn out by mutiny. I'm a sailor, sir. But this is a voyage of a different kind. Currents of intrigue, and slander, tides of treachery. I hope one day you will teach your boys, sir, that they had an unruly time. Went well. My temper was short. My intentions were honorable. Or will history distort me the way MacArthur and his friends are doing? I don't believe so, sir. I hear they intend going home before me to set their case. By God, I'll see them across a courtroom. As for the New South Wales Corps, I trust history will put them in perspective. Infamous opportunists, whose only military exploit was to arrest me and strike my daughter. You're tired, sir. I'll leave now. I'm pleased about the school. Thank you. A fine woman, Mrs. Mannion. Not only well-intentioned, but well-proportioned, eh? Quite. You have a very attractive benefactor. It was Mr. Campbell, sir, who got me the school. Yes, I heard you say it. No matter how it was done, Mr. Harvey, I wish you well. Who told you? Does it matter? I then asked others. And finally, Mr. Campbell admitted that everyone seems to know that I have the schoolhouse on your charity. Don't talk rot. It's not rot! However good your intentions, I've been made to look a fool. And worse. And don't be so pompous. So what? You heard me. Pompous. I was left a small amount of money by my father. I can invest it in property if I wish. I don't call it an investment. Two guineas a year rent. I call it patronage. For a man of education, you are sometimes the most total ass. Will Mr. Harvey be staying to dinner, Mum? I regret another engagement. Ma'am. An ass. Then I shall bray elsewhere. Mr. MacArthur called early, Mum. He sails this week and he hopes to see you. Major Johnson and the others are aboard, sir. And Blackson. Many of our one-time friends are conspicuous by their absence. Now there's a fellow at least who detested me for years. At least I know where I stand with him. They say there's been a quarrel with his handsome widow. Gossip has always been this town's principal enjoyment. I dread to think how dumb it will be when I'm gone. <laughs> Perhaps a mess alliance between Mrs. Mannion and Harvey will enliven the dinner table. We'll miss you. I'd expect no less. Goodbye, Kemp. Good luck, Mr. MacArthur. I 
do declare. Mrs. Mannion becomes more distant every day. And a choice of company leaves much to be desired. We hold certain truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life and liberty. And what, Williams? The pursuit of happiness, sir. Good. Thomas Jefferson wrote that all men are created equal, entitled to life and liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I reflect on it. Think about what that means. It means, sir, we need Mr. Jefferson in New South Wales. If there are any more interesting observations, we'll discuss them in a moment. Ma'am? I have to talk to you. But I'll wait in the cottage until your class is over. It may attract less attention. Please. Shall I show you the way? I know the way. I fear it's inconvenient. I sent them a difficult essay that will take some time. May I fetch you a chair? There's no need. I assumed you would lodge here. Fortunately, perhaps, I could not afford the furniture. Why fortunately? Because I would have felt obliged to move out, as I shall from the schoolroom when I can find new premises. You're being absurd. I'm an ass, ma'am. I have your word for it. Ma'am! And as for being absurd, I admit it. Since any man who can't make a fortune here what? is an absurdity. Will you listen to me? Or do you intend to make me angry? I fear I've already done so. It angers me that you should place money in such high importance. It's not money that's important, just my lack of it that divides us. As if that matters! Oh, but it does! I'm sorry if I was ungracious. If I cared less for you, it would be easier. You must believe. I'm not rich. It's a world of difference in being not rich as you are and in being as I am. Proud. I underestimated your pride. I want you to read this. It's a deed of gift, legal and notarized. I can't accept this. It's done. The schoolhouse and this cottage are yours. Connor, I won't allow it. Connor is an improvement on ma'am, and you will accept or I'll donate it to the orphanage. Why? My family have written that I'm to go home to Ireland. There they feel I can find a suitable husband. I can't go on living at Chaparro on Patrick's charity. But you have an income from your husband's estate so long as you remain a widow. You know that, do you? I was told. So what am I to do? I marry for position and be miserable, or I marry for love and be poor, or I mean to marry. How can you ask me? I fear I have to, since you'll never ask me. Or am I wrong and your feelings for me are indifferent? I've always loved you. But not lately. More than ever. It's the hopelessness of it that makes me so... so churlish, so... Quarrelsome? Pompous? So ass-like and absurd. You admit it! Can't you see? I'm penniless. You have pupils, and so now you have a house. Connor. Our people live on less. Not people like you. Then it's time I learned. What about the gossips? You'd lose your social position. Oh, how little you know me! Would you be selfish and condemn me to a lifetime of tea parties? Am I to remain some ornament because of your silly pride? Can't you understand? I want to live other than idly and uselessly. I want to make up for all the arid years of being Mrs. Stephen Mannion. If you love me, won't you help me to do that? When will you marry me? Oh, I truly had begun to think that you'd never ask.
Majesty conveys the most urgent regret and displeasure at the late tumultuous proceedings in this colony and at the mutinous conduct of certain persons therein toward his late representative, William Bly Esquire. It is my commission and intention that we shall all make a fresh start, that all those dissensions and jealousies which have existed here for some time past, will now terminate forever. The laws of this colony will be obeyed. Be assured of that. And be assured that justice will be administered with fairness and impartiality. I intend that those in position of authority or wealth will set an example by conforming to all laws and regulations. Finally, just let me say this. So far as it depends on me, I intend to make this a happier place in which to live, a more comfortable place. I intend roads to be improved, hospitals, churches, schools to be built. I promise that not only as my duty, but as my contribution to your future. Assist me and the honest, sober, and industrious inhabitant, be he free settler or convict, will ever find in me a friend and a protector. Remember the first Pianga? Not Pianga, Governor. Oh, yeah. His name was Philip. He talked to my mama and me. True. Mm -hmm. When I was at the um. orphanage, there was a man named Governor King. And Mrs. King was a friend of Mrs. Manning, and that's how I got my job, so there. I was talking about Mrs. Manning. She was nice. She didn't love the master. She loved Mr. Harvey. I miss him sometimes. Johnny, feel quick, it moved. Ah. Oh. 
کنه There, my love. What do you think? Thank you. I told you I had plans. But, Connor... Now, don't be stuffy. Why should boys alone be educated? And after all, I taught Emily. Indeed you did. I think it's a splendid idea. So does Mrs. Macquarie. She's to be my patron. wife will allow me to say, you look like a painter by games, man. Your dear wife, Lachlan, would be concerned for your gallantry if you said less. Thank you, Your Excellency. And how is the school, Mr. Harvey? We have 20 pupils, Your Excellency. Oh, an increase. Good. And we have, how many is it, Connor? Eight? You'll have to look to your laurels, Mr. Harvey. I will, sir. Harvey's, it seems, are in great favor. And why not, ma'am? Why not, indeed? May I make amends for once offending you and say you look radiant? Thank you, Mr. Blackstone. I don't think you've met my husband. Oh, I should like to, Mr. Harvey. I've heard of you, of course. Well, lately, I hope you've heard better of me. No, I meant from Patrick. You used to talk of crossing the mountains. I still do. I hope to convince the governor. In fact, if you and Mrs. Harvey would support my cause, clearly you have far more influence than I. It's true. <laughs> oh, forgive me, sir. That's why I laughed. It is true. I'll persuade my husband to speak on your behalf. There. You could be a supplicant for Gregory Blacksland. I love you. Can one say that at garden parties? One can say it anywhere. It's as good as agreed. An expedition to find a way across. And you'd be amazed at some of the people who spoke on my behalf. Hold on, Gregory. When? Well, it'll take some time. I want to make some excursions up the Warragamba. Winter's the best time, I should think. Winter after next. Who'll go? Oh, Willie Wentworth, um, Lieutenant Lawson, he's a surveyor, and you. I'd give anything to join you, but... You've become a farmer. I never thought I'd get to love this place. It was a lonely childhood. I was unhappy here. There was a lot of cruelty. My father... My father used to think punishment and deprivation kept men in line and made them work. To him, the country was a jail to exploit and to make his fortune. 
But you can take chains off and men don't run away. Oh, not if you pay them wages, though it's illegal. Oh, is that such a dangerous step? My dear fellow, if you choose to be a reformer, though I do think that's inviting trouble. My father used to drive them off. So, they stole from him. I give them a few cobs of maize and we have no trouble. You'll have the whole damn tribe on your fields if you persist. My fields? It's not so long ago, Gregory, the fields were theirs. Excuse me. Who sent this? Emily. Johnny said I could write, Mom, because sometimes I miss you. Only you're not to tell about him, because he don't steal now. And we've got a baby and a farm. And would you send me a present of some soap? Yours respectfully, Emily. A baby and a farm and soap. Soap. The messenger will collect it the day after the new moon. I suspect it'll be a long and interesting journey. You mean to visit them? Well, I think that's why he allowed her to send a letter, don't you? Will you provide me with credentials? Credentials? A letter to be delivered in person. And, of course, the soap. Patrick, are you going to try to bring her back? Well, that depends on Emily. You tricked me! You let me write, and all the time you made him to come so you could kill him! Well, now look what you've done! Now you listen to me, Johnny Prentice! Johnny! <laughs> Moolah, you're my friend. You and Bill, Johnny and me. Good friends. Tell me where they're meeting, please. Gun. No. You wait. Johnny, come here. When? Shoot! I didn't come to harm you. Why not? I killed your father and you let my mother die for it. I tried to stop them. I don't know if I can make you understand. But she wanted to hang. No one wants to hang. It weren't right. It wasn't right to kill my father. She wanted to take the blame. To stop them hunting you. They're both dead and it's done with, Johnny. I came in peace. With a gun? 
I threw mine away. I never meant to use it. I've been remembering the damnedest things. Soldier ants and fights. You remember our fights? Put it away. You don't need the gun. You want to take Emily? I want to see her, that's all. There are presents. And a letter for her. Cloth to make clothes for the baby. And thread. And soap. Let me talk to her. Why? I have a right to. You talk her to go back to town. Emily. I feared he'd kill you. I hoped he wouldn't. I never thought I'd see you again, Master Patrick. We've been worried about you. The mistress sent a letter. It's in here. She wants you to come back. We all do. To her? To Beltrasna. I'll look after you. The baby needs a home. You can't keep her here against her will. She wants to go back with you. I'll not stop her. Thank you, Master Patrick. It's real kind. You heard what Johnny said. You don't have to stay. I heard him, and he's wrong. I do have to. Not against your wishes. But it ain't against them. I'm glad he said it, and I'm glad I saw you. And thank the mistress for the letter and all. Tell her we're all right. You sure? Yes. I'll tell her. Find his way. Little along will meet him. Find him. Then let's go home. I think you'd better behave than mine. you better look to your laurels. Oh, Mark, I sometimes wonder what it'll be like here when they're grown up. Will it ever be more than a penal colony in this place? Well, maybe not in our time. But perhaps in theirs. Here are your tickets of leave. Good luck to you all. Where's it to be, Lynch? Sydney or Parramatta? The others reckon Sydney town, sir. Me? I'll see what shapes up. Might work on that road they talk of, building across the mountains. If you ever thought of farming, there's some land down by the river. I could help you get started. That's a kind offer, Mr. Patrick. Only I reckon I've been here too long. Thanks just the same. <laughs> 